Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another WPLN Facebook Live session. My name is Mercedes Blackwood. I'm the Director of Strategic Impact here at the Women's Public Leadership Network. We're so thrilled to bring these types of opportunities to you to learn more about what life is like on and off the campaign trail. And today we're thrilled to have Tara Campbell with us. Tara is the youngest female mayor in California history and currently works for the County of Orange as Chief of Staff to a County Supervisor. Today, she'll be sharing what her time looks like on the campaign trail, especially as it relates to balancing her personal and professional life and all that comes with going on the campaign trail. I'm also excited to share that we have William Gonzalez with us. He's one of our fantastic summer interns from the University of Georgia, and he'll be helping us co-host. I'll share more about WPLN towards the end of this call, but we are a 501c3 nonpartisan organization that works to get more women, uh, center and right-leaning women elected to office, whether that be uh, elected, appointed, or judicial positions. Uh, please feel free to add questions you have during the call into the chat box below. We'll be sure to answer those towards the end. Uh, but with that, I'll hand it over to William, who will introduce Tara and get the conversation started. Hello and good morning. Happy to be here. Uh, my name is William Gonzalez. I'm from UGA as a sermon intern, and I'm very uh, glad to introduce y'all to Tara Campbell, uh, Congresswoman. Uh, if you would uh, describe yourself and, you know, uh, kind of explain what your role is in California. Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited to be with you guys this morning. Well, it's morning over here on the West Coast, but um, my name is Tara Campbell and I serve on the city council in my hometown of Yorba Linda, California. And uh, I never thought I would be in, in politics, but that's usually how it starts. I ended up taking an internship when I was in college in, in DC. I uh, was working on some common sense legislation, trying to get members of Congress to work together and the government shut down. And that was in 2013 uh, over healthcare. Came back to my hometown to see that that same gridlock could happen on the city council level. And so I decided if you wanna see a change, you gotta be part of that change. So I started getting involved uh, first on the Parks and Recreation Commission in my town, and then I ran for city council back in 2016 and got elected. And now I'm in my sixth year on the city council, and it's just been a big blessing to be able to give back to the my hometown that's given so much to me. Right. So uh, I'll kick it off with the first question. I mean, you kind of answered a little bit of it, but being a lifelong resident of Yorba Linda, what inspired you to join the local leadership uh, specifically through city council? Yeah, I, like I said a little bit, um, I, I came back to my hometown to see there was a little bit of gridlock and, and tumultuousness. Uh, and it was really sad because that was my hometown or a great community. And I think we needed uh, good people to step up. And so uh, I decided to uh, run back in 2016. Uh, and was humbled to be elected by uh, the voters and, and serve uh, my community. Uh, a follow up with that, um, being from that hometown, did yeah. you see that your constituents appreciated somebody that was local, that was you know coming back home and kind of fighting for their place? Yeah, I, I did talk about how I was bringing my education back to benefit my my hometown. Um, I think it means a little bit something more when it's some, a community. Yeah, obviously you grew up in and were able to give back to. Um, and obviously a lot of people that uh, are still here and, and knew me from that. Right. Um, kind of going through your journey of community leadership, what advice would you give to someone that is looking to run for office, uh, maybe somebody in a smaller position or probably even higher up? No, I, I always share with people to get involved today. You don't need to wait till you are in elected office to give back. You should be able to give back and you are able to give back in your local community through volunteer organizations, um, all these different community groups that are in town that you can make a difference today and be engaged in your city government and the decisions that are being made at city hall today. So you don't have to wait um, to be elected to give back. And so I always really encourage people to get involved today. Um, yeah. Certainly, I mean, I could definitely agree with that. Uh, my community knows our church leader more than the mayor, to be honest. With you. So, you know, it's that disparity. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, 
looking at the political landscape nowadays, local leadership has kind of taken a shift since COVID-19 and the uh, surge of the pandemic within the public view of uh, local Americans. Um, do you feel that this office and local offices like it need to be seen in a more critical view uh, now that we've seen the applications of what a role like yours could actually mean? Yeah, no, I think people need to be definitely paying attention to the local level. Um, even with COVID, obviously with COVID, we saw the importance of local leaders at different levels, um, especially county level, especially here in California. But I think on the local level, whether it was COVID or not, it's incredibly important because these are just the decisions that are impacting your everyday life. This is the picking up the trash on your street. This is your local firefighters and police officers. These are the things impacting your day-to-day -day life. And I think we all need to be paying attention to our local leaders as well. Yeah, certainly. I mean, here in my hometown, this was the first time that my neighbors went to the council city meetings. That, uh, they went to the organizations. They actually listened to First of all, who their mayor was, which is very surprising, and most people don't even know that. And then who their elected city council members were and how they decided, you know, would schools be closed, would uh, would masks be implemented. Right. And seeing that shift, you know, because I've, I've always heard from teachers every now and then, listen to your local uh, leaders. They are the ones that impact you directly. And, you know, that's something that you kind of listened to and just shrugged off and went one year and not the other. But definitely, you know, with the uh, COVID pandemic, that definitely was brought up and uh, amplified. To say no, exactly. And to take a little bit more of a positive tone to it, too, you know, you can make a difference pretty quickly on the local level because your government's right there. You can walk, you can go to City Hall and talk to your community leaders. Sometimes, you know, at the state or federal level, it's hard to, you know, get a meeting or you can't always fly up to the state capitol or to, you know, DC. But at the local level, you can actually make a difference pretty darn quickly. And so on a positive note, I think that that's something, another reason to pay attention to it because you can make a difference at the local level pretty darn quickly. Right. Um, going on, uh, with your experience and especially young age, do you see kind of this antiquated formula of running for office changing with the addition of social media and other different tactics to get supporters and voters out there? Yeah, social media obviously has changed the game because now uh, you, you have information at your fingertips. You can be communicating with your residents constantly and they can be asking you questions constantly. And I think that that's a good thing uh, so that you're able to address and answer those questions. But it absolutely has changed the game. And that's actually something when I ran uh, back in 2016, um, one of my big things was communication on, on the city side of communicating with residents. Our city didn't have any social media. Our website was a little dated. Um, and so that was when I got elected and made a major push and we got social media platforms for the first time. And now, obviously, our, our city pages are one of the most followed in our town because that's how you're going to get up to date information on what's happening in your city. And you can know at a moment's notice. So, yes, social media has definitely changed the game. And I think in, in a positive way. Yeah, uh, Lana, I actually would like to ask to, you know, you ran 2016 first and then in 2020 for reelection and there was a pandemic um, budding. Um, in 2020, can you speak to some of those challenges you face in a re-election, um, kind of looking back, and how you um, use social media to sort of pivot on um, your campaign um, on the cusp of COVID? Yeah, well, just even when the pandemic started of, of back in 2020, you know, engaging with your residents and finding different ways to support your community in a time when we really couldn't gather. And so, exactly to your point, um, I remember when. Um, it, it first started, obviously people, yes, weren't gathering, but I was like, how can we support our small businesses who are hurting so badly right now? And we did a whole, you know, dine, take out, take out campaign and supporting and promoting our small businesses in town. Um, and we were able to give out grants for that, but promoting on social media, to your point of showing where resources were, um, communicating with people constantly because you didn't have those same formats uh, that we used to have. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I remember being in high school during the, especially the pandemic. I mean, before like 
probably less than five years before the pandemic, the school had no way of contacting us besides the phone call after school hours. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it probably lined up perfectly because we were able to check up to see if we were going to be out of school for the rest of the, of the school year or if things were updated. But even out of city council, having that information be much more accessible was definitely a big advantage to us knowing where our situation was and how to better improve it. So absolutely. Um, besides city council, how important is it to participate in those community groups? You know, community groups such as volunteering or even more structured groups like a chamber of, of, of commerce. And what impact do you see women uh, being in those leadership roles? Yeah, I think it's incredibly important to be involved in all these different community groups. To take your example, the Chamber of Commerce, to have uh, you be involved in the business community. And most importantly, I think what it shows you is hearing their concerns, hearing the issues that they are going through so that you can be a better leader in helping serve them. And so when you're involved in those groups like the Chamber of Commerce or the Rotary, you're hearing from you know your neighbors in your community about what their needs are, and that's going to help you better address it. And absolutely, women, we need to be in all different avenues and different leadership positions um, across the community because being a business leader is incredibly important to knowing what to then do on the city council and vice versa. Right. I mean, from personal experience, being somebody of Hispanic origin, seeing that diversity really does matter, especially when you're trying to see who really runs your life and who controls the business aspect and all the different aspects of, uh, of running a, a city. But starting off with just seeing that there are women in those positions of power is definitely uh, reassures me that there's at least some form of everybody's voice being represented. Right. And and to give an example to what the my experience with the Chamber of Commerce here, because I had been engaged with them before and heard their concerns um, and heard the concerns of the community about supporting our businesses and, and our restaurants. When I got elected, I was then able to partner with the Chamber of Commerce to start our own restaurant week here in Yorba Linda. So we're now going on, I think, our third or fourth year of our restaurant week where you know we're partnering with our local restaurants to offer deals and hopefully showing people to dine at new establishments, hopefully supporting that business and getting residents to realize all the great businesses we have here in town. But it's because I was able to know and hear from those residents, the business community and residents, and then turn that into a policy or a project going forward to help benefit the town. So it is, it's about being engaged and involved in those community groups. That makes a difference. Certainly. Um, going on with engagement and community leadership, what would you say is the impact of having young people, especially in those leadership groups? I mean, an example that uh, you were involved in was the Young Civic Leaders Association. Can yeah. you give a little insight in what impact a young person could do through those organizations? Yeah. So I, I started the Young Civic Leaders Academy because, and it's for high school students um, to come and learn. It's a six week program to learn about city government. And the reason I did that was because I remember growing up, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't have, uh, they, they didn't really teach. They taught maybe federal level, maybe state. You really didn't hear about city government. You really didn't hear about the local government. And like I said before, that's what really impacts your day-to-day -day life. And you can make a difference today, you know? So um, I wanted to create this program for high school students to have also a positive experience. I think a lot of people are obviously turned off by government and I totally understand that. Um, but I wanted it to kind of demystify city hall encourage them to come in and learn about the city and how it all works and then show them how they can be a part of it and be a part of the decisions that are even being made at City Hall. Um, and so we've actually had a lot of students take that and run with it. I mean, each week we learn from a different aspect um, of, of government. So I've had one girl who took it and started her own library program that's now reading books to kids at one of our, our housing sites. Um, I have students who 
met with business leaders during our program and now have started their own business. I had one who shadowed the city manager and then has now gone on to turn it into a full-time job with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so we've had a lot of success in showing them. And, and to me, it's just proven once you give them the opportunity and the tools, they will take it and run with it and make you know positive change with it. Absolutely. I mean, that is how I started, to be honest with you. In high school, I joined a similar organization. It was called the Youth Leadership Hall. It was for our county. And that opened my eyes to really the possibilities of you making an impact in your own hometown. You know, a lot of kids my age were like, let's go off to college and never come back. That was their goal. That's that's their dream, basically. And what that uh, organization taught me was actually let's come back and improve what you had, uh, mm -hmm. especially, you know, grow up there and you want to kind of give it back. But leadership uh, organizations like that definitely opened my eyes. And hopefully, I mean, my sister is applying next year as well. So, you know, that's another woman that can absolutely see that she can make an impact just as much as me and just as much as you as well. But yeah. those organizations were definitely key. Um, yeah. Uh, on a more personal note, how do you see yourself maintaining a reasonable balance between your personal life and kind of your career and your ambitious goals? It is still a work in progress, William. <laughs> I think that's uh, probably what every um, anyone in elected office, you know, um, because as much as like city council in my city is um, part time, you know, we get a stipend, you have, you know, a real full time job um, besides it. But it's obviously a little bit more than that. It's about what you put, how many hours that you put into it. So it does become um, a big, a big commitment. And you want to be at all those events. I love being out in the community at all the ribbon cuttings and all those kinds of things, too. Um, so you do try to find balance where you can. Um, but really, it's about service. And I, I want to do the best I can to serve my community. And so you, you make it all work um, because you just enjoy really serving your community. Uh, do you see social media kind of worsening that balance? Now that you know you've campaigned yourself as yeah. you are who you pretend uh, who you pretend to be on your social media accounts. Yeah, do you have to keep that up? No, I think that's a great point. But I think I think it's actually kind of a good thing because I always tell people like what, when I'm out dining at a restaurant, which you normally wouldn't think, but I'm dining at a Yorba Linda restaurant. I'm posting about it. You know, I'm showing that you know supporting a small business, dining locally. Or even if you're going to the local gym, you're supporting that business. Um, so even your everyday life of, of you know, um, what you're doing or spending time with family, showing that you are, yes, a family person, uh, family oriented. And I think those are all great things to share. And that's part of what makes you also a better leader is showing that your whole world and, and your day, day to day. And that's how people are really going to connect with you. So. Um, I will say social media makes it you way more accessible. So you have to be constantly sharing, right? And you're thinking about that photo that you have to share. But um, I think it's a good thing that people see that you're well-rounded in, in all aspects of your life. Uh, adding on to that, I know that you work with uh, other people in, in, in your city council. Um, some probably are a lot older as, uh, than yourself. So do you see that drastic change and how they are not able to do such a adaptation so something that is uh, very needed in this time of age um i think everybody brings their different skill sets you know um obviously something that i brought um when i when i got elected to the city council at 23 um you know i brought that younger perspective which i think was a, a good perspective but none of them um you know challenged that i think they were all in agreement that we needed to be more connected with our community we needed to do these uh, renovations to our technology front, um, making, and when I say technology, I'm not just talking social media. I mean, the efficiency that comes in a city government when you're um, innovating and using technology. I mean, something as simple as we used to be, our city used to be on paper time cards. I mean, when we're talking about creating now a system that is electronic so that we are just more efficient at city mm -hmm. hall. So I think everybody, honestly, is understanding the importance of technology and innovation um, and connectivity with people. Um, and every, yeah, everyone, I think, really sees the value in that. 
Right. Um, adding on to that, you know, being a young conservative specifically, does that inspire your own perspective on leadership in the political landscape of this generation? Yeah, I always um, I have a colleague that usually says, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And I mm -hmm. kind of use that analogy for us as young people. I think we do need to be at the table because the decisions that are being made today, we're going to be living with right? They're going to impact us the most because we're, <laughs> we got a lot of time and the impacts of those policies. Sometimes you don't see it for a couple years, right? Um, we're going to be the ones living with the decisions that are being made today. So I do think it's important that young people are at the table. And, you know, as a, a conservative leader, I think, you know, something especially here in California that we're going through is the incredible overtaxation and cost of living. And like when I say talking about living with the decisions that are being made today, um, that's incredibly important for us as young people to stay engaged and involved because again, just these decisions are monumental and we're gonna be living with them. And so we need to be at the table. Certainly, I mean, I can definitely agree with that. Being a, a conservative myself and being a minority, you see that opposition off the bat. I mean, especially, you know, going up and uh, expressing your views, you definitely see that opposition. But I always tell even my own siblings, if you as a group of people, uh, let that be women or any other classification, uh, especially race, uh, give your vote off to a certain party or a certain ideology off the bat without thinking about it, you lose that power, you lose that voter power, uh, you lose the power that you have as a U.S. citizen. And having the young conservatives kind of take a uh, larger hold of, uh, of diff uh, different positions and especially the growth of minorities uh, as well as uh, conservatives, you know, meeting in the same aisle was definitely very surprising for me, but uh, it was a growth that I saw uh, as a good thing. And I mean, it must be challenging being a young conservative in a state like California as well. <laughs> It is, but I will say they give us a lot of opportunities to talk about issues on a personal level. I'll give you an example of um, in California, obviously everyone in the country is experiencing the increased cost of gas, right? And we in California have uh, the sad distinction of having the highest gas prices. And in California, we, the state legislature approved, you know, gas tax increase years and they increased it even in July, when we're at record prices, we have a hundred billion dollar surplus in the state of California and they still increased it. Um, it's conversations like those that to most people and that impacts pretty much everybody in California, right? The gas prices. So it, it op opens opportunities to have conversations about issues like that, that are impacting everybody and kind of questioning, why is the state legislature, why is you know the governor doing this? Um, and so it does open up conversations for, I think, where conservative leaders can speak out and, and talk about policy issues like this isn't right. You know, so I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, even here in California. Certainly. Um, you know, being a, uh, the youngest female and uh, the youngest female mayor in California history, what advice do you have for the next generation of young women looking to become leaders like yourself? Get involved, get involved today. Um, you really can make a difference. Um, even if it's on the local level or you you know go on to other uh, things in the future, but um, whether it's running for office or like we said, being a leader in your local community, whether it's Chamber of Commerce or Rotary or Lions Club, whatever it may be, you can make a difference. We need, uh, we need you, we need you in those leadership positions. So I hope that uh, you will go out and, and do it. Excellent. Tara, thank you so much. I think we'll move into some questions from our audience now. Um, one of the questions we have is looking at both um, offices you held, could you speak to the difference in approach to your campaigns for mayor as opposed to city councilor um, due to the difference of nature in those roles um, and what issues you were facing um, in the city at that time? Yeah. So interesting point uh, for, for your Belinda and most cities in California, you actually run for city council and then the city council elects the mayor. So it wasn't two separate campaigns for me. It was, I was running for city council 
and then the mayor gets elected by the council. But you, my colleagues elected me and said, you will be mayor um, for this year. And so it wasn't too terribly different. It was still the same, same issues. Um, but of course, every, everything, you know, from like I mentioned, uh, communication and technology was a big thing for me and my campaign, um, but also public safety. And when I got elected to city council, we were able to add a deputy to our law enforcement services, which is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Um, and fiscal responsibility. Proud to say that when I got elected to city council, we were able to um, decrease the number of years that we were amortizing uh, our unfunded liabilities. We went from 30 years to now 20 years amortization of our unfunded liabilities. So fiscal responsibility, public safety, and communication and technology were big things that I talked about in my campaign. And I think the community resonated with that. Excellent. You sort of answered this question coming up, you know, speaking to fiscal responsibility and public health, but what issues are you most passionate about um, advocating for? Yeah. So like I said, those those were the ones that I was really passionate about in 2016 and I'm still passionate about and still working towards to this day. But a couple things that I've kind of added and in, in, that I'm really passionate about in my uh, city is um, fire prevention and fire mitigation. I'm sure everyone's heard about fires in California. And sadly, in my town, growing up, I there was the a big freeway complex fire in my city. And then when I was on city council back in 2020, we had a fire here. Um, so fire prevention and fire mitigation is a huge thing for us. Um, one of the things I did was bring on um, goats, if you can believe it, goats to eat uh, some of the vegetation on the hillsides, which the community loves, let me tell you. So it's kind of an environmental way to help with that. <laughs> Um, and also, you know, cost effective way to get um, some of the vegetation handled out there and mitigating and preventing wildfires. So that's a big thing. And then economic development, supporting our businesses. When I got on council, I brought on a firm to help us not only uh, recruit businesses, but retain our businesses um, so that we don't see those vacancies. And then that also helps um, with sales tax, which helps pay for then our police officers, our firefighters, all those kinds of things. So. Those are two okay. other things, economic development and fire prevention. Great. Uh, Tara, you have quite the political resume uh, being the youngest female mayor in California history. I'd love to ask, um, did you have any mentors that helped you get where you are? Um, how did you seek them out and how did they help you? Yeah, I, I definitely had um, a number of people who were very supportive and very grateful. Uh, a lot of the times it's as simple as going and asking them for coffee and almost doing mm -hmm. kind of an informational interview, if you will, um, to chat with them about, you know, what you're, what you're hoping to do, what you're hoping to accomplish, and kind of most importantly, hearing from them. Um, so when I, when I decided I was going to run back in 2016, I did a lot of those coffees with community leaders, presidents of their HOA, you know, just people who I had met um, in the community already and, and chatting with them about the issues and their thoughts. So that's a great way to kind of start is, see a leader that you, you know, respect and want to emulate and grab coffee with them and chat with them about it. Um, and you don't always have to ask the big, you know, M word, the mentor word. Um, right. But being able to bounce ideas off somebody is always incredibly valuable. Excellent. That's such great advice. Uh, Tara, thank you so much for joining us today and William for hosting. Uh, for those that would like to keep in contact with WPLN and would like to continue engagement, um, please uh, stay connected with us or join our social media platforms on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, for any of those folks that still have questions for Tara, please email us at hello at womenspublicleadership.net. Uh, we can go ahead and send those to Tara and uh, she'll go ahead and answer those. This uh, video will be posted to our private YouTube channel afterwards for those that would like to view it later. Uh, but Tara, again, thank you so much for sharing your leadership journey and staying engaged with us. And we look forward to having you next time. No, thank you guys.